Hello there everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make this triple row goddess wirework macrame ring. And this is what it looks like. So I've just used copper wire here and then silver spacer beads. You can always use whatever materials you want to. And then it's going to sit something like this on your finger. And give a nice impact with the beads down top and that wire wrapping across the beads. Giving a really nice pattern. So if you want to learn how to make this ring, then keep watching. These are then the materials that we'll need. First of all here we need the wire that we're going to use. This is a 0.6mm regular round copper coated wire. And we're going to be using this throughout the whole ring. And then here I have my beads. These are 3mm rounds and I'm just using some silver coated metal spacer beads. But you can obviously use whatever you want to. So let's get it all together and let's get started. So then we're going to need some lengths of wire here. And first of all I have three lengths of the 0.6mm about 40 centimeters each. These are going to be the holding wires. They are longer than what we need them to be but I'd rather have too much so we have enough to work with as well. And then we'll also need another two lengths here of the same wire of about 50 centimeters each and these are going to be the working wires throughout. So I've now taken all my lengths of wire here and put them onto my mini macrame board that I'm going to be working on and I've just put all the lengths through the same slot up there. The three ones in the middle here, the short ones, are going to be the holding wires. And then the other two here are going to be the working wires, so they're out to each side of those. So now what we need to do is start off making a few square knots here. And I'm just going to do that by taking my left working wire, putting that across the top of the holding wires, all of them there, and then take the right one over that, and then we need to go under everything in the middle so make sure you catch all of the holding wires and then bring it up through the loop on the other side so this is just a regular square knot and then I want to tighten this and then this is basically the first half of a square knot now we need to do the other half by starting with the right side and taking the left one over that and underneath everything in the middle and up through the loop on the other side and then again tighten this nice and gently because it's wire that we're working with so it reacts a bit differently than cord and I'm just going to make sure the holding wires are kind of laying flat next to each other rather than overlapping too much inside the knots here so as I'm tightening them tighten that nicely so then we now have one full square knot and what you want to do is make three of these in total so now that I made my three square knots here around the three holding wires then when you start adding on some beads so what I just want to do is just gently separate out the wires a little bit from that very last knot just to make a bit of space for the beads and then what I'm going to do is you kind of want to make sure like I said that the wires are lying next to each other here so flat next to each other instead of overlapping from the knots there so what I'm going to do is you have a wire that's more naturally in the middle on that one I'm going to add four of my beads and push them all the way up as far as they'll go which is why if we just open up the wires a bit it makes a bit more space then on each of the side ones I'm going to add three and then push them up there and sit next to the other ones so there we go so we just have one more in the middle than we do on the side ones so just like this and then what we actually want is the middle wire basically needs to sit a little bit or the beads rather a little bit on top of the other two so it's going to start doing that naturally but just kind of maneuver it into place it makes it a little bit easier to then move on to the next step I'm just going to tighten up the wires a bit so there we go we now have the beads in place and we then need to use these working wires to start wrapping them around the beads themselves so then the first thing I just want to do is get these working wires a bit into a better position so I'm just going to take the one from the left side underneath all the holding wires in the middle over towards the right side and just bring it all the way underneath back up to the top pull it through and then the one from the right side do the same thing bring it underneath all the holding wires over to the opposite side I just like to do this because I find it gets the working wires into a better position to then wrap around the beads here as a next step so just smooth out your wires as well as you're working with them continuously run them through your fingers and your hands helps keep them, keep them nice and smooth and without kinks and bends and it also warms it up and makes it easier to work with so to start wrapping the wires around I'm going to start with one of them 
and do the whole way down and then take the other one and do the same thing but on the other side. It doesn't really matter what side you start with because we'll be doing the same thing anyway. I'm just going to take my right one here and it's coming out above all the beads below there. So what I want to do is start crossing this over so the very right one, because I'm coming from the right side, I want to go above the first bead there and just gently maneuver your wire in place here as you go. And then I want to come below the first bead in the middle so the one that has four on it and then also below the first bead on the left side so it's coming down at an angle like this and then what I want to do is bring it underneath all the holding wires and I like to kind of just hold my finger on my work with the beads a lot of the time make sure it stays in place bring it all the way to the other side all the way up under the beads here and what we then need is for this wire to come back underneath behind the beads at a straight line pretty much which means that it'll be coming out below the first bead on this right side that we didn't include first time that we wrapped it over and I just want to make sure that I push my beads up here as I go to try and make it as nice and tight as possible so it's not going to end up looking too loose so I'm now coming up below the first bead on the right side and now I want to cross over the top again and I'm basically going to just move down one bead every time I do this so that means underneath the second bead in the middle and the second bead on the left side and just keep maneuvering your beads into place so the sit just how you want them to come out on that side bring your working wire back underneath the holding wires all the way to the other side and then making sure everything stays in place so all your wires and your beads sit exactly how you want them to sit so something a bit like this and like I say rather look at this throughout and maneuver and adjust it as you go because once we've done it all we can't really go back and adjust it again so just do it throughout as you go and then again I'm coming across below all the beads in a straight line which means I'm coming up below the second bead on the right side cross over the top again coming down at an angle moving down one bead so now I'm coming below the last bead on the left side there cross below all the holding wires and then bring it out to the opposite side just like that so that's the first one we've now wrapped all the way around and you can see it's naturally coming out to one side now. Then I want to take the other one back from the top and then basically do the exact same thing but then obviously just start from the other side here. So I'm going to take, it's coming from the left side, we need to cross over the top, skipping, we're not taking from the left one here, we're not incorporating those beads yet, but going below the first bead in the middle and the first bead on the right side there and then push your wire underneath the holding wires and I put my finger on it and pull it out to the opposite side and that straight line coming behind the beads so now I'm coming out below the first bead on the left side bring it across the front again at the top moving down one bead at a time coming down at an angle again up to the other side and then bring your working wire back underneath the holding wires and then out to the opposite side again crossing over in that straight line to do the very last one the last wrap here moving down one bead at a time and crossing over at an angle and like I said before I just do my last wrap just want to make sure that I'm happy with how everything's sitting so far cross it over and you can always take some pliers as well and use them it might be a little bit easier to get in there than with your fingers or your nails to help adjust the wire to exactly where you want it to sit cross that over bring it back underneath again because we need this to come out to the same side where it came from so basically cross and come out to the opposite side than the other one because we need each wire again to come out on each side so we can then start making some more square knots now 
So we've now wrapped both wires around here and then to cage this in place to make sure it completely stays where it is and we want it to, we need to make some more square knots like I said. So just take your wire, start making your square knots exactly like you did before. Like this, make the first half first. And the first half here is the most fiddly because it kind of wants to pull and make this part a little bit loose when you tighten that. So I like to tighten it first, then put my finger on and then tighten the rest all the way up as far as it'll go because obviously it's wired so it doesn't react quite the same as cord again you can always just use some pliers if you feel the need to so that's the first half and then take the wire from the other side and then finish off this square knot so you get one full one just like that and then again, just like before, you want to make three square knots here after the beads, and then I'll show you what we do next. Now that I then have my three square knots on this side as well, we've completely caged in the beads here, and this is then the top section of the ring. So what I'm going to do now is just release some of the holding wires here, and what I'm going to do is again, you make sure you have the holding wires lying flat next to each other as you're making the knots, so you naturally have one that's in the middle and one on each side of that. So I'm going to release the two on the sides, so one on each side of that middle one. And then what I'm actually going to do is I want to start getting rid of some of these holding wires because there's a bit too many to deal with when we then need to finish off the ring as well. So I'm going to take some flush cutters and then go in and right after the very last knot, cut these off. And just leave that middle one because we need to use that bit later on, obviously to continue making knots but also to finish off the ring and then when I cut them off, and don't worry about it because it's wire so it's not going to just come out or for, come undone or anything then I'm just going to make another square knot after that just to kind of get rid of those little ends so they're hiding inside of the next square knot here just like this and then what I want to do is do the exact same thing on the other side. So I have these wires up here. Just take your piece, turn it the other way around, get rid of those two outer holding wires, and then make one more square knot after that. So now that I've gotten rid of the extra holding wires there on each side, what I want to do now is actually start shaping it a little bit as well. So in this case, I'm then going to get my ring mandrel out. You can use whatever you have that's the shape and size you want your ring to be. Then I'm going to place this, my ring, what I've made so far behind it. Then obviously get it to the size that you want. It's not too crucial yet with the size because we can fix that again later on because we'll be making more knots anyway. And I want to bring the holding wires here, we have one from each side, all the way around to the opposite side. So they line next to each other like this. Just like that. And then... I'm going to take this back off and like I said don't worry too much about the size because it's going to naturally spring open a little bit. We can readjust the size again later on. And then now I want to start fastening this together. So I'm going to start on one side, I'm going to be doing the same thing on both sides here. And that's why I take, make sure the holding wire goes all the way up towards the square knots that you've already made. Now this can be a little bit fiddly because obviously the wires here are loose and all that. But what we need to do then is we then now have technically two holding wires lying next to each other here and I'm going to make some more square knots incorporating this one from the other side as well. So just focus on these first of all. Take your working wires and just make some more square knots with that. I'm going to start out with one. Make sure you start from the same side that you did before to continue the consistency. And then bring the other one over that. And then to get underneath the two holding wires just put it through the ring band and then up to the other side through that loop and then gently start pulling it tighter and then make sure as well that the two holding wires are lined next to each other here and then pull it all the way tight so you can see that traps that holding wire in place then I'm just going to do the other side to finish off this square knot make sure it's just nice and tight, as tight as it will go so take the other side over the two holding wires and then the other one over that 
through the ring band to get underneath the two holding wires and up through the loop on the other side. And this is then the second half of that square knot and tighten this all the way up, just like that. So we've now trapped that holding wire in place and what I want to do is exactly the same thing to the other side as well. So just flip your ring around and on this side, on the opposite side when you go to that, you'll have to just be aware that you need to start from the other side. So I'm going to have to start with my right one. The way you can tell is if you're looking at the very last square knot that you made, where you have your working wire coming out more underneath the knot, so where there's a little loop above the wire, that's the side you need to start with. So bring that over, take the other one over that through the ring band and up through the loop on the other side and then gently pull this tight all the way up underneath the previous square knot and make sure it's nice and tight as tight as you can get it and then finish off the square knot by taking the wire from the other side and making the other half of it go through the ring band and then tighten this and then here you have another full square knot so we now have one on each side you can already see now it's really helped make it a lot more sturdy and easy to work with because we now have these two holding wires lying next to each other but they're not too wobbly and flimsy because they've been tightened in place by these square knots so this is the point we're at now now what I also want to start doing is thinking more about the sizing here so I'm then going to get my ring mandrel back out to help with the sizing and also help keep the shape of it. Then I'm going to put my ring back on it and then get it to the place where I want it to be. And then what I want to do is pull this tighter. So get it to the right size and shape for now. So that just means I'm going to grab hold of the two holding wires that are coming straight out to the side here and then also push against the square knots just like that and that tightens it up nicely. And then you can just adjust it to exactly the size you want it. So there we go. So now what you want to do, I'm going to again take it off. Still don't be too concerned about the size in case the wires move a little bit while you keep making some knots because you can still adjust it. It's just to kind of get it almost into place. What I want to do now is then continue making square knots here on each side and I basically want both sides to meet up in the middle with square knots so opposite the beads so you just start from one side you can start making a few knots then make the same amount of knots on the other side and then see how far you get to make sure that you make the same amount of knots on each side to make them meet up in the middle there so just keep making your square knot tightening them nicely going through the ring band here So this is another full square knot. So I now have two on this side and still just one on that side. So I might want to make another two on this side and then I'm going to try and make three in here and see where I'm at. And like I said, just make sure the square knots meet up there in the middle. So do this on both sides and then I'll show you what we have to do next. So now I've then kept making the square knots here and I've made them to meet up there right in the middle. So you can see I have my working wires coming out to the side right by each other. So also then this is where I want to make extra sure that this is the right size so you can try it on obviously get it to the right size because you can still adjust it so as you can see here opening it up if you need it to be bigger or then holding on to the holding wires and pushing the square knots there tightens it up again so just make sure that before we then start to finish off the wires that we're going to do now it's completely tight what I'm going to do first is get rid of the holding wires so for that, it's going to be doing the same thing on both sides of course. You see here, the holding wires coming out kind of between some square knots. But then what we need to do, instead of just cutting this off, because you can see like I just did, you can open it up. So if you just cut it off, you'd be able to pull this apart. And then obviously it wouldn't be very durable. So what I'm going to do is we need to kind of create a stopper here so you can't just pull the wire through. So where it's coming out from, I'm going to take it and then it's kind of more coming out towards one side. I'm going to take it and bend it over towards the other side. So just a straight sharp angle. Just like that. And then I'm going to take 
some flush cutters here and I want to cut it off so there's a little bit of the end left going in that direction towards the side. I'll just cut off the excess and then I'm going to take some chain nose pliers just grab onto the very end of it and what I want to do is then just flick the very end inwards towards the ring band a bit because I'm then going to take the chain nose pliers and squeeze it down as well so that makes sure that the very end of the wire is just going to get nestled in between the square knots so you can't feel it either here or on the inside so just run your finger over it make sure that you can't feel it if you can feel it you want to just squeeze it a bit more so that that's nice and secure but also finished off nicely and seamlessly and obviously you want to just do the same thing on the other side with the holding wire as for the working wires here it's basically going to be the same principle but we obviously have two coming from each knot there at the end so what you'll find if you look closely like I said before you'll have one holding wire I'm just going to do one side at a time here one holding wire is coming out more naturally towards the top of the ring band and one is more coming out naturally towards the inside so I'm just going to do one at a time this one is coming more towards the top so I'm just going to take this and then bring it over towards the opposite side again just a straight bend like that take my flush cutters same principle cut off the excess while you have a little length left sticking out from where you bent it and then take the chain nose pliers at the very end of that wire and just bend it inwards towards the ring band and then take your chain nose again and squeeze it down make sure that you can't feel anything with your finger and then one on the other side is the one that's naturally more coming towards the inside of the ring band I'm just going to push that through the ring band to get it to the opposite side and get that bend in there. I'm going to flip it over here so I can see what I'm doing. So get that into position, same principle, get your chain nose, cut off the excess so you have a little end left, and then just take the very end of it with your chain nose and bend it inwards towards the ring band and squeeze it down. So exactly the same thing again just make sure especially on the inside here that you can't feel anything so any sharp edges or something so that's how you finish off the wires do the exact same thing with the rest of them here and then once you've done that you'll have your finished ring so now that you got rid of all the excess wires there so the ends and it's all nice and secure and feels nice both on the inside and the outside then you have your finished ring and it looks a little something like this so obviously with the materials that I've used here and then it'll sit like this on your finger give a really nice and simple look but still a nice impact as well with the beads there on top so that's what it looks like a fairly simple design here and a pretty easy and quick ring to do as well so I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you very much for watching hello everyone today I want to show you how to make this triple world goddess macrame ring and this is what it can look like so you have this really nice crossover section with your beads and the cord gives a really nice effect and then you have a ring band all the way around it's nice and comfortable to wear so it's a pretty easy one to make as well so if you want to learn how to do it then stay tuned so these are the materials that we're going to need now first of all here I have some S-long cord and it's a 0.9mm thickness 